In the previous video, we have created a way to run our random walk generation, but currently we only output the result as a debug.log statements. Now, in this video, we want to visualize our floor using a tile map. So, first of all, in the hierarchy, let's right click, select the 2D objects, and let's select the tile map. And this will be the tile map representing our floor, so let's name it floor. Great. Now we do not have to set anything else, just for a simple visualization. To use it, we will need to create a new script called tile map visualizer that will use this tile map to put on it our tiles for the floor. So let's go to our underscore scripts folder. Let's right click, create a new C sharp script. Let's call it tile map visualizer. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. Great. Now this script will be responsible for putting our specific tiles on our tile map depending on the positions that we give it. So we are going to first of all create a reference to our tile map. So let's create private tile map. And we do not have it, so alt enter. And we will need to be using Unity Engine uh, tile maps library. It will appear at the top. And now we can access the tile map class. Let's call it floor tile map. Okay. And this will be our tile map. Uh, to assign it, we are going to expose it in the inspector, opening the square brackets above the tile map, the floor tile map. And let's type serialized field. Okay. So this attribute will allow us to see this in the inspector. And now all we need to do is create a method that will paint our tiles on our tile map. Before we can create our method to paint our tiles, we will need to know which tile to paint. So let's create private tile base. And this will be our tile uh, that we have in our tile uh, folder that I have pre-created. And this is the tile that we can paint on our tile map. Let's call it floor tile. Later on, of course, you can create, make it into an array and select a random floor tile. For now, we are going to keep it simple and paint only one type of tile. And what we will want to do here is create a method. Let's create public void and let's give it a name paint floor tiles. And we are going to take here i enumerable, which is the generic form of a collection that we can loop through. And we are going to pass here a vector to int. And let's call it floor positions. So you always want to use the most generic version of a collection that you want to pass here, since we can pass here a list, a hash set, or any other collection that we can iterate through. And here we are going to create a new method. Let's call it paint tiles. Okay. Escape to not use IntelliSense. Open brackets. And we are going to call uh, to pass here floor positions. We are going to pass here tile map. So floor tile map. I have misspelled it. So control R R to rename. And I'm going to rename it to the correct name. And after floor tile map, I want to pass here our floor tile. So this is the tile that we want to paint. Again, alt enter on the new method. And let's select generate method from the quick uh, help menu. And I do not really like the names of the arguments. So I'm going to, uh, to call here positions. The tile map will be tile map. And the tile base will be tile. Great. All we will do here is call, instead of throwing an exception, for each tab tab var tab to move and position as the name, tab to move to, uh, and the collection change to positions. Great. So we are going to loop through each position in our positions list and we are going to call paint single tile method. Now we are creating all of those methods since this will be much easier to use them in the future when we implement new methods to our tile map visualizer. Again, we are going to call to pass here our tile map. We are going to pass here tile and we are going to pass here the position. Okay, make sure that you pass the position from the for each loop. Again, I have misspelled it. And again, alt enter on this new method to generate it 
inside our class. Great! And to paint anything on the tile map, first of all, we will need to get a position on a tile map, so var tile position. And to get a position, we are going to call tile map dot world to cell. And we want to convert a world position to cell position. We need to pass here vector 3 or vector 3 int, so let's type in the parentheses vector 3 int. And we are going to upcast our position, which is vector 2 int. So we get our tile position. And on this tile position, we need to paint our tile. So let's type tile map dot set tile, which will allow us to set a specific tile on this position. We will need to pass here the tile position. And as the tile base, we are going to pass our tile. And this will be it. We can save this script. And let's go to our simple random walk generator. I have it opened in Visual Studio. Great. Now, all we will need to do is get a reference to our tile map visualizer. So let's create a private tile map visualizer. Let's call it tile map visualizer okay and we can expose it in the editor so serialized field and we are going to assign it through the inspector and what we can do now in, is in the proce run procedural generation method we can call our tile map visualizer dot paint floor tiles since this, this is the only uh, public method and we are going to uh, pass here our floor positions and this will be it. So let's save the script and let's go back to Unity. Great. Now we have our second script, or rather third script, Talmap Visualizer. We can assign it to our grid, but elsewhere we can create a new script, a new object. So right click in the hierarchy, create empty, let's call it Talmap Visualizer. Okay. Let's reset the transform. Three dots and reset. And let's drag tile map visualizer. And what we will need to do is assign a tile map here. So let's assign our floor tile map. Next, we will need to find our simple random walk generator. We can drag it in the hierarchy to be at the bottom. And we will need to assign to it our tile map visualizer. So let's do that. And we should be good to go. Although, I think in our tile map visualizer, we have not exposed our tile for the floor. So I'm going to click those three dots and add the script. And I will need to add to our tile base a serialized field attribute so that we can see it in the inspector. Let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Great. Now we should be able to assign a floor tile. Let's click here and we should be able to select dungeon underscore floor underscore one. Now, if we press play, we should be able to generate our map. And let's see it. And as you can see that we have our map generated. And this is the result. Of course, we can move our camera a bit or select our camera. It should be set to orthographic. We can increase the size of the orthographic view to something like 10. And let's generate our map. And you can see that we are constantly adding to our tile map. So this is an issue. So let's stop the game. And let's add to our tile map visualizer another method. So let's double tap on it to open it up. Great. Let's at the bottom of this class create a public void clear method. And we are going to call our floor tile map dot clear. And I should, uh, we should select clear all tiles. Okay, great. And what we can do is we can either call it inside our paint floor tiles. Or we can go to our simple walk generator, which I have opened in Visual Studio. And before we uh, visualize our floor, we can call our tile map visualizer.clear. Great. Let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Okay. Let's press play. And now we should be able to press generate. And each time we're generating a new dungeon. Again. I think it, it hasn't saved the size of the camera, so I can set it to be 10. And what I can do is tweak the settings in the simple random walk dungeon generator. Let's set it to be 10 iterations. And for now, let's uncheck the start 
randomly each iteration and let's click generate and you can see that it generates a sort of a cavern now if we select start randomly each iteration it should generate us a bigger caverns because it starts randomly at a, a random point of our already existing floor and again we can increase the iterations or walk length to something like 20 and 20 and it should generate us a much bigger dungeon and if we uncheck the start random each iteration it should generate us a smaller but more consistent so more of a island shape uh, like a dungeon and if we check it it should create us some kind of halves and some kind of smaller rooms sometimes as you can see here great before we finish this video let's stop the game let's set our camera orthographic size to something like 15 maybe and let's select the color and what we can do is open our tiles or actually we can open our sprites dungeon character tiles and we can extend it if we slide this we can see the color here we can select our main camera select the background select this icon to select the color and we can select our color of the tile so now uh, we can even make it a bit uh, darker with the value great and if you press play now we should be able to see our dungeon with a much better background great so let's stop it you can play around with the settings for our simple random mock generation and in the next video we are going to implement a generate method inside the inspector so that we can generate our map inside the edit mode and we are going to refactor our classes so that we have a, a good foundation to implement and other algorithms like binary space partitioning and the random walk that is creating corridors so see you in the next video